What's up, Square Pin Brigade? On this episode, we have comedian Jacob Williams uh, from Wildin' Out and from uh, from Adam Devine's House Party, Comedy Central, Colbert, Sexual, Colbert all kinds of stuff. Um, we're here to discuss taking up space, dating as an introvert, getting away out of your shyness, and buying jewelry after the breakup. We also are going to put Jacob through my my patented plan, and we're going to check back with him, too. This is going to be awesome, and we do listener mail on the Patreon. Don't forget That's- to sign up for the Patreon. That's www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Um, yeah, that's and- right. Patreon.com is where we do all the bonus episodes, including listener mail. So join us over there and it helps us uh, keep the show going uh, at Patreon.com. And this episode uh, on the Patreon exclusive episode, we talk about uh, dealing with uh, aggressive girls, breaking up with a stalker and then uh, what you can do to get a girl to talk to you uh, online on uh, on whatever uh, dating apps. Uh, but also, each of us does uh, consultations. Uh, if you want a consultation as far as dating uh, advice, sex advice, uh, any life advice from me, you could uh, email me uh, at uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com. That's where all my info is at, and we can set up a consultation. Dante, if people want a consultation with you, how do they reach you? DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You can book it right there. Um, I love y'all, man. Let's get into it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolutions being podcasted, and I am excited. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it, because this is a special show. We got a special guest in the building, but first and foremost... Harry, what's popping? What you got going on? What I got going on? I'm I'm busy trying to be the greatest that's ever been. It's difficult. And it takes a lot of time. You don't realize how time consuming that is. It does. It's crazy. Ridiculous. Um the uh I know your lady had a little birthday thing. That's right. uh, Hanging out. I know you've been doing that. We had to stop our fuck session to do this show, just so you know. To come on? Yeah. But that's how this works. You know, I stopped. You're a and dedicated then, dude. And then you're once dedicated. we're done, I'll go right back to it. That's all right. So I'll drink just, a Gatorade and get right back in it. You stopped at six and a half, and then you just, pull, you just pulled out. Your pull-out game was crazy. All yeah. right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, let me introduce our guest. Uh, he has a list of credits while and out. St- Stephen Colbert, Adam Devine's uh, comedy. House party. House party. Uh, so much shit. Give it up for uh, Jacob Williams, y'all. Give it up for Jacob Williams. What's going Hello. on, brother? Thank you. No one clapped, but uh, thank yeah, you. it's fine. I'll <laughs> put it in post. Don't worry oh, about it. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, no, I'm it's, it's fucked up now, but don't worry about it. Oh, my bad. Oh, thanks everyone for clapping. I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks for doing this, man. I appreciate you, you know, giving us some time to chat with us a little bit. Um, I, I was looking at a lot of a lot of your stuff on. Uh, online and stuff and man uh, multi-talented it's annoying <laughs> oh wow thank you that's very nice uh, a lot of people would disagree with the talented part but, uh, <laughs> I, I doubt it I they doubt just it. say it's annoying that's weird that, yeah for, I, I, that's how they come back They're like i watch your clips man i gotta yeah, say I'm, pretty annoying <laughs> pretty annoying <laughs> pretty annoying that you do so much well it's ridiculous uh wow, but man th- i really appreciate you doing the show um i uh how long have you been doing comedy uh, about it'll be 15 years in September this uh, next month I guess. Um, so I started in 2007 in mm-hmm. a small college town where I was going to college, and uh, I saw my. College at? I was going to Beloit College in Wisconsin, um, and um, I was really obsessed with comedy. But I was I thought I was like too quiet or shy to do it. But then I saw my friend try an open mic. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I, I, and then I realized you don't have to be like amazing at it right away. So I, I signed up and gave it You're a like, shot. He sucks. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, something like that. But uh, no, a great guy, but he ended up quitting comedy. But I just kind of got hooked and just kept doing open mics and then did it in Chicago for a while and eventually moved here a few years Chicago's ago. Chicago's a great town. Chicago's a great, uh, a great market to start in, too, especially. It's a very supportive community from yeah. what yeah. I understand out there. Yeah. yeah, a lot of good stage time and improv and stand up and places to do stand up. It's fun. Yeah. And how long have you been in New York? Uh, I've been in New York about eight years now. I came in like 2014. 
Uh-huh. And um, yeah, it's been fun. I love New York. It's just some of the best comics ever. It's I always feel like I have a lot of work to do whenever I see <laughs> a show here. I'm like, oh man, you and you and countless others. It's I mean, it just seems <laughs> like the best of everybody, the yeah. best of everywhere. Uh, when they um, when they Jesus, what's wrong with my camera, Harry? What you're good. You I thought you're good. Uh, yeah, it looks good. It looks yeah. foggy. Oh, it wasn't from this end, but anyway. Uh, Maybe it's I don't know what the fuck. You don't see a foggy in the corner. Oh, that's the green screen. It's not that it's foggy. It's the lights oh, coming through. Yeah, yeah. Too that's oh, too much okay. sunlight from the uh, the side of the rain, so yeah, it's not so much foggy. Man, it looks like you're burning in a uh, a fiery hell of green. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. This is great. Fantastic. You know they say it's red, but the Bible was rewritten many, many times. Hell could be Who knows? green. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> um. Yeah, but th- it's almost like the best of. Uh, the best of everybody comes here and yeah. then and then it becomes, you know, it's, it's kind of a thing where, you know, as, as you get to a certain level, everybody comes here to see where they really measure up, you know. So and I mean, everybody, everybody from I mean, Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart, everybody, you know, yeah. you come here and you, you, you know, you, you, you find out as good as you are, wherever you're from, you come here and you're like. Okay, now I, I know I got work to do. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But that's and great that's, because it forces everybody. you to get better, though, because yeah. it's better to do that than to be the big fish in a small pond and then just in life. But that's in, within life in general. You know, yeah. it, it you yeah. can only get better by competing against the, against the best, even in dating. Like, I know that that happens with like, uh, uh, you know, somebody will be the hottest person in their hometown, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. a Nebraska 10 or whatever. And then you <laughs> yeah. come out to, uh, you know, <laughs> LA or Miami and you're like, oof, boy, I'm a five at best <laughs> out here. And then you got to develop a personality or you or you get uh Shane Gillis has a joke where he was like, dude, I was I was killing it where I was from. He's I came here, I'm five. <laughs> I like that Shane thinks he's a five. Um it's very generous, Shane. It's a very awesome. loose five. He's very funny. His special is very funny. Yeah, it is. He killed it. Uh, His bit about fucking Trump moms. Let's just uh, oh, yeah, just follow. Yeah. Look it up on Maga, YouTube. Mega moms. Mega moms. Shout out to Shane. Um, here's the interesting. It's like you are kind of a reserved dude. And I've been I've been talking about something uh, on the show. But like you're like you're like, a, uh, are you a sh- I mean, what's funny is I've seen your stuff online. It Does that give you an outlet to just kind of kind of just let loose? Or is it? A character is it what like how do you um yeah i mean a lot of people uh, i think think that i'm doing a character on stage because i am i can be very uh <laughs> shy and awkward or like kind of uh self-conscious uh yeah. and then they'll meet me off stage and i'll be like oh wow that's uh really how you talk i guess and uh, <laughs> it's kind of a problem sometimes because uh I guess, yeah, a lot of the times I think I just am not very confident and it can work if it's like going well, like if the jokes are landing and they're like, oh, it's a character. But then if it's not going well, it looks like I might seem like very inexperienced on stage or, or in other situations. I like just seem out of I like. Does it, Is it a thing of when it when it doesn't go well, people are like, that was pretty good for your first time. And you're like, yeah, oh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> like, after 15, 15 years, years of doing comedy, it <laughs> might still seem like I'm doing comedy for the first time if it's a rough night. So, yeah, it's a it's kind of a problem sometimes because I don't know. I don't I feel like I don't naturally like. OK, so like like when I was taping Wild Not the last time I was like getting coffee on the set, I had the whole like uniform on. It was I was about to tape like an episode for my 11th season. And the person working there was like, what do you do? Are you like a production assistant? <laughs> and I was like, uh, no, I'm in the car. But I, got, I guess I just have the energy of a production assistant still. So I don't know what to do about that. But uh, you do what's, have oh, a what's also keep... interesting is that yeah. when you are going against those guys who are much bigger personalities, you kill it because it it really comes out of nowhere. You know what I mean? I think it's because people expect so little of me that uh, <laughs> any, anything, any joke I, I put together. Well, I, I think they expect you to kind of be timid. And then when you come at them, they, it just, it, it blows them away because it's, it's, it's yeah. so sharp and so, so dead on, you know what I mean? Oh, um, thanks. Um, but uh, it, it, it what some one of the things that I've been talking about on the show a lot is you know because this is a relationship show and we kind of talk about that is and um, you know I've been talking about 
taking up space, like the, 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 the comfort of taking up space. Now, does it, where do you think the shyness comes from? And let me ask you that first. Yeah. Um, well, I are think, you uh, shy or are you just kind of low key? Which is it? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I definitely feel kind of shy still. Um, I mean, I've, I would say I've like made a lot of improvements in that department. Like I used to be so in my head, that just, you know, afraid to have any type of conversation at all, which made doing comedy the first, the first few times really, especially scary, but, but yeah, I'm still, I still have a lot of social anxiety. It's still tough for me to like start conversations like, uh, and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I think my parents were just, um, you know, they're maybe a little socially awkward too. So like, I didn't, they, and they kind of like spending time on their own too. So I feel like growing up, I was a little frustrated with maybe not having as many like social situations to be in as I wanted to be to like really learn how to be more social. So that's something I've kind of worked at as an adult and going to therapy and doing comedy and like stand up and improv and stuff like that. Um, I think I've like kind of come a long way with that, but at the same time, I, I definitely still get like very self-critical at times. And then it's like tough for me to like initiate conversations. Um, I can usually like, get along really well with people if I have like, you know, someone there to help start the conversations <laughs> or things like that. Yeah. Once it's going, but, uh, but yeah, I guess sometimes I, I do feel like maybe I make not the best, first impression or something because i might seem very uh shy or awkward or something so i don't know well i mean like being on wild and out i mean because there's a lot of big a lot of energy yeah a lot big of personalities. personalities and stuff how does that i mean that how do you fit in with that i mean because we are talking about this 11 season there's a lot of people that I, that didn't su survive one or two seasons you know and weren't able able to make their mark how do you feel like you made that how did you or is it is it because I'm from what I understand, I know some people that have done it. I mean, I'm, I'm good with um, I'm really good with um, uh, oh god, why am why am I blanking now? But it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, it, 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 there's people I know that you know are huge personalities, and how do you jive with them? Yeah, I think um, yeah, that show I actually feel kind of at home at it at this point because it's like um. I think maybe because some of the people are so uh, my friends on there, some of them are like very charismatic and so loud that uh, I feel like I get along well there because it's like I don't really have to worry about like breaking the ice so much because everyone's just already making jokes and then I can yeah. kind of like throw in a joke here and there too. But mm -hmm. uh, and then it's uh, and then it, I, I guess I just have a lot of fun doing it. So I really yeah. enjoy it. Like, trying to think of stuff that's funny or trying to come up with stuff. And it kind of like is nice that um, I have like a little bit of a different style than other people. So sometimes that can like, yeah, work to um, the advantage. Yeah, for sure. So I, I just feel very lucky to get to do it. What's and, your favorite um, situation where that low key aspect really caught people off guard? Is there one particular line or, or one bit or something that really nobody saw coming because of your delivery and tone? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, um, I think like my first season in like 2013, um, I did a rap battle with Nick Cannon oh. and, uh, I, I, it was a long time ago, but I think I said something like you're married to Mariah. So you have a lot of clout, but does it ever bother you when she puts you in timeout or something like that? <laughs> but I think he was just like, not expecting me to like rap yeah, battle him at all. Rap battle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause like, uh, everyone just thought I was like, just nice off stage. That's not, I guess now that I'm saying it, that's not, I'm not super proud of that one in particular, but, but, but I can um, see that, that it's funny. It's always funnier when it comes from a character that you don't expect it to like the juxtapositions are always funnier. It's also why, you know, some of the comedy tropes work like the cursing grandma is always funny mm -hmm. because you yeah. just not, you don't expect that from a certain aspect of society sometimes, which isn't the case. I mean, I we're used to it, but it still catches people off guard and it's fun. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think like Matt Rife one time said I looked at a rap battle that I looked like Jared from Subway and I said that he looked like he just got molested by Jared from Subway or something. Like that. I, don't know <laughs> that's even, I can't really think of any good example, but uh, but yeah, it's just um, yeah, I guess people just don't expect me to say me. Ja so Jacob, like, like this, uh, the the uh, would you consider yourself an introvert? I guess would that be a fair assessment or no? How do you not that you have to classify it, but. Would you consider yourself more introverted, obviously, than 
extrovert? Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, it's weird because, uh, yeah, I don't know what the term for it is, if it's like an ambivert or what, but uh, yeah, I do feel very introverted. But then I also yeah. really like uh, being around people. Obviously, I love doing how, comedy. And, how does know. that affect, let's say, like dating or, or sex life for you? Out of curiosity, do you carry it with the same perspective and demeanor or is it different for you? Um, yeah, dating. Uh, yeah, like, I think, uh, yeah, that can be sometimes tougher in terms of like, start, like I said, like kind of like starting the conversations with like dating and things like that. Um, I feel like, uh, yeah, sometimes it's like tough for me to meet people, uh, where we like connect and everything. I've definitely had some like, uh, good dating experiences and stuff, but also, uh, yeah, I guess it's like tough for me to sometimes like be assertive in those situations or kind of um approach like people that i'm interested in or how's like the that. how's the wild and out groupies because they seem to be a little <laughs> more uh maybe a little more aggressive maybe I, I don't, if i uh you the know, fan base is general you're saying uh, I, I, well yeah i mean you know it, it, i mean uh, one uh, godfrey's you know godfrey's a real good friend of mine and, and rip michaels is really cool with me yeah. and um, I like I I knew Rip before I was doing comedy in Brooklyn and and uh, you know I mean one of the things that Godfrey said because Godfrey just did a bunch of a uh, couple of seasons he did a bunch mm -hmm. of episodes and yeah. and he was like look it's more about having fun like it, it's not that you get these amazing lines mm -hmm. or whatever it's more about just kind of being in a situation where you're they feel like you're having fun and if you're not having fun then I, I, because i mean one of the things about um I, it's weird because i find myself whenever i'm doing stand-up and i'm auditioning and it and it matters to me it always sucks i mean it, i mean I'm, yeah. I, you know i've been doing it 22 years so there's a certain level of proficiency that i'm gonna have no matter what but it's never good enough it's only when i when I don't, you know, I was uh, Nick DiPaolo said this, uh, rest his soul, uh, Nick <laughs> rest, his, rest his MAGA soul. Um, he he uh, he said, you don't really get funny until you don't stop giving a fuck. And it, it's like yeah. anytime I've auditioned for something where in my mind it mattered, whether and I whether or not I did well, I've always had a not a bad time, but never the sets never go the way I want it to. So, you know, being comfortable. I mean, I remember Godfrey telling me like, they just want you to, you, you know, because it's it, that, that type of fun, that energy is contagious. Um, people want to see you succeed when, when you're in the audience, they want to see you succeed and they want to, um, you know, they want it to be enjoyable. And if you're enjoying yourself, even if you're bombing, it, you can bomb in a way that it's just it, it's fun. You know what I mean? It's it's fun for everybody. And it, 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 it you know, they don't they don't want to feel tense. So it's funny, like with women, I think um, although there are some times when women want to see you fail, they're looking to cut your legs out because, of, you know, their father touched them. or I don't know. Whatever. They didn't get enough hugs or whatever. But but I mean, I think. Um, one of the things that I've been thinking about, like I go through periods of times in relationships and just thinking about stuff. And I also do like relationship counseling. You can check me out at DanteNever.com and you can get a one-on-one -on -one consultation. But one of the things that I, I've been talking about is taking up space. And and um, me and Harry has been talking about that for years. Yeah. Harry's yeah. a really nice guy. And so he doesn't want to be an asshole. You know what I mean? Like nice guys never want to be an asshole. And so when they want it, they don't want to be an asshole. They don't ever really want to. It like, was difficult for me yeah, to take up space or just um, just to, to to get what I deserve or ask for even just nice things, just things that I deserve, you know, not even like yeah. not even asking for things that are, are I just don't even like I didn't even like talking to waiters or waitresses, really. Like I just didn't want to engage with people for whatever reason. Just because I guess maybe because of my upbringing, I think part of it was like, you know, everything was a problem or everything was also very pessimistic. So the less you talk to people, the better, the less problems there'll be. And that became a weird self uh, defense mechanism. But, you know, it's at some point you, I had to get past that because it's I, I was to the point where, you know, Dante was saying I didn't want to be, be an asshole. And Dante had to explain to me that no matter how much I would try to be an asshole, I will never 
be an asshole. My very best, my best attempt at being an asshole would probably be like it's, a four. It will. It's <laughs> it's sort of com a confident and, and assertive. Yeah. Like his. Oh my god, I'm I'm way out off base, right? And uh, and and that's to everybody else. It's perceived as comedy, mm. calm and assertive. Oh, if if that much, you know what I mean? It's kind of mm. like, oh, there you are. You know what I mean? And and it's almost like the assholes. But there, there's another thing that would happen, which is I would I am very or at least I was very like calm and quiet. But then when I would snap, I go to to like nine or ten the other way, like yeah. very intense mm. after it goes too far. But then that's too much. Right. So I also hated that. Like I would. And then I had to manage that aspect where now it's a little bit easier where if someone is kind of being an asshole or overstepping their bounds. I'm able to confidently go, no, 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 that's not what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people I also find double down. It's very interesting. Like assholes. Another thing they'll do is they'll double down yeah. and then you have to learn to double down, which is no, no, that's not we're not just you're not going to ignore what I just said. Let's get back to what I need you to do. That type of thing. But that took practice, a little bit of practice of getting out of my shell and not and understanding. But also it became easier the more I did it. The same thing for me with talking to women. It became easier the more uh, it did, the more it didn't end in failure because it there, there was nothing to end in failure. So it was just practice. And you're like, oh, OK, nothing bad is going to happen as a yeah. result of this. But that was my experience with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can definitely relate to that. And um, yeah, I, I think. Um, yeah, I still would like to be more assertive, but it was, yeah, it used to be like at a place where I like had trouble bringing up anything at all. And um, my therapist uh, kind of pushed me to like, you know, confront like my roommate at the time about stuff that was bothering me. And mm. it was kind of scary because then my roommate got, would get really mad at me because since I hadn't done it before, he felt like I was like doing a personal attack on him or something. But now we're like ended or up being, or or it yeah. was just his way of manipulating the situation in his favor that he's been manipulating in his favor all along. I, you, you know what I mean? I, I, I mean, you know, what's interesting is one of the things that we talk about is empathy. And it's interesting how somebody who's an asshole will will, will be an asshole, ha consistently be an asshole. And then when you call them on it, you're like, well, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. What do you what do you mean? What do you or when you give it? I don't you know, you know, you don't confront them, but you give it back to them. And then they're like, whoa, whoa, nine times out of 10, they'll always say it's a misunderstanding and yeah. try to either. It, which is still an asshole thing to do to try to put it on you like, whoa, yeah. wait, 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 you must be what's, misreading what's this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what I was doing. I wasn't like, yeah, that, that is what you're doing. The you next level is when with with Dante, with Dante, which I like, which I've started doing too. Is like, no, yeah, you were, like, hey, no, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem with you. Like, yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, you yeah, do. You do. Yeah. And then, well, I don't have a problem. Well, then I have a problem with you, right. FYI, because I do have a problem. That type of thing, yeah. Because people will double down and they'll make it. They'll do an asshole thing, which is to rile you up. And then when you get riled up, be like, hey, where, where, where's this coming from? Yeah. Like, you know exactly where it's coming from. Don't be an asshole. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a weird thing because the, the nice guys, uh, so, you know, like in the course of doing comedy 20, 22 years, and I've seen guys blow up and really get famous and guys get a lot of money and whatever, whatever. But what I find is, is, I, I don't know if I could, if my percentages is right, but I would say 90, 90% of the people are miserable. You know, they get this money and there's this they take on this persona and then they're miserable in the context because they're not really comfortable with themselves because they, well, they never addressed anything that they were dealing with. They just yeah. are financially successful. But being financially successful is not addressing the emotional issues you have. It's just adding money, which yeah. adds more, comp, uh, more, money, more complexities. More yeah, yes, more money, yeah. more problems. Um, one of the things that we do, like when we're, um, it's funny, it's like uh, what we call it, what, I, what psychologists call it, uh, exposure therapy. So like when you talk about that thing where you, you're, uh, you know, you have, uh, you have problems, um, you know, approaching situations or kind of breaking the ice or, or approaching is like one of the things, like when I put guys through my system, like I have a system where I put guys through it. 
to just make them more social. And one of the things we do is I, I call it laying the five bricks. Laying the five bricks is that you go out and you pay five women a compliment every day. Mm -hmm. um, nothing sexual, nothing, um, at, nothing sexual. You don't only do it to the women that you want to have sex with. And it has to be honest. Uh, it has to be. So even if you got, even if you, you, you're talking to Whoopi Goldberg, it's like you have beautiful teeth, <laughs> you know, like, like you have to find something that you honestly can compliment in a real way. And, and what the first stage, so there's different phases that I will take a guy through. One of the, the, the first phases to do that. And we do that like five women a day, every day for eight weeks. Right. So if you I think it's I forgot the number, but I think it's 108 comes out to like 185 women in in the course. It's uh wait, it's five, 35 women a day, something like 185 women in the course of eight weeks. And what happens is I don't I know pimps that don't talk to that many women in, in, in that course of time. You know what I mean? That's a lot of but eight what, weeks is 280 if you're doing five bricks a day. Yeah. OK, so. um. But what happens is the first week it takes them it takes them hours to get through the five because they're you know you you know that that anxiety uh, uh, like when somebody's mm -hmm. jumping double dutch and they're trying to jump in the rope and they're like uh, 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 do I do because the bottom line is that they deep down you don't think that you're worthy like you don't think that you're good enough to 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 just jump in and. Um, because, and, and so one of the things that I say all the time is that, you know, a, how does a woman know if you're worthy? Uh, they know that you, I mean, how does a woman know about, know about you? How does somebody get to know Jacob? Mm -hmm. And if you really think about that, you tell them who you are. They have no idea who you are. So their first impression and their last impression is what you give them. Now they're going to interpret that those whatever you give them. But when you uh, like, you know, I, I, I like I was doing a thing with this guy and I was explaining it to him. I, I don't know if you have you play any poker. Actually, yeah, I, I got super into poker really? over the pandemic, which uh, I'm trying to cut back because I went to some underground games and uh, <laughs> lost a lot of money. And uh, actually, I was thinking about this earlier when you were saying how like comedy it's like good to be around people that are way better than you but then with poker it's like when you yeah. do that you're like losing a lot of money unfortunately <laughs> yeah, but, yeah yeah but the you know the poker tell yeah you know guys get really and young guys young guys in poker who i, I have a friend of mine who's a professional poker player clayton fletcher shout out to him he's a co great comic too but um one of the things is that um you everybody like truth always comes out the truth of, of the matter of what you think. And as much as some people are better at lying about it, some people, you know, exact over exaggerate. Anytime I, I see that over exaggeration with a person is super loud or super, it's always a, a, a it's always re reflective of this insecurity that they're trying to overcompensate so that you're not, so that they're not exposed. But um, just talking like, so three things that I think, are the most attractive thing. I mean, most guys would believe muscles and, a, you know, a chiseled jaw. And, and I always say, you know, if you, if you were dating a, a victorious, if you met a Victoria's Secrets model and she's a straight 10, right. But she has herpes, right. She's no longer a 10, you know, what I mean? like that. You, That'll definitely you, knock off a couple points on the scoreboard. Knock, you can yeah. cut that down to like a three, if that, right. And so, the things that we that we really the things that are most important are the things that nice guys value the least because it it comes so easy for them to be and those things that you know being kind and generous and loyal and truthful and empathetic um but those are the most important things and those are the things once you get past that initial um you know, that in initial introduction and once you do, there's an attraction there, then n your six pack and your cum gutters don't mean anything if if you're, you know, you're a horrible person, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and so going but but on a base level, I mean, you've been doing comedy 15 years. 
So I don't know. Do you do you still get nervous or no when you go up? Um, sometimes, yeah. I don't get uh, as nervous. I used to get super nervous every time. Now um, I don't really get that nervous most of the time. Um, I I will get nervous for stuff like I did a show with Rube Michaels at Barclays Center recently, like stuff like that. I'll be. Oh nervous. yeah, yeah, yeah. That oh yeah, that was the thing with Ti got booed off stage. Um, yeah, and I had like a rough set that night as well, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, but but like stuff well, like thank that. God for TI, um, huh, Jake? <laughs> yeah, that really is. Like, I, I thought I had a rough set, and I was like, okay, yeah. could have been worse. No one was so. talking about Jacob, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so I was you're, like you're really glad clear. I wasn't famous. I didn't hear uh, about it, but I fucking sure as shit heard about TI. I should probably but... stop telling people I didn't do it because yeah, no one would have known. No, nobody would know. Just say, yeah. just say you played the Barclays. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, that's I it. I got a standing ovation, but uh. No, I don't know. Um, I definitely get nervous for certain shows if it's like something like that I haven't done. But uh, and then, like you said, like, yeah, an audition or something, I can definitely sometimes get in my head. So, yeah, I'm trying to, like, figure out how to be less attached to, like, the outcome and those uh, dating well, to, or audition situations. To be situations. honest, it was the Barclay, but it was Brooklyn, the Barclay Center, which is let's be I mean, first of all, that audience, you know, Brooklyn is in general, it's not the you know, they're looking for you to trip. Uh, they're looking for, in fact, they they might be trying to trip you in, in a <laughs> sense. Um, but it's also, it's like, how do you connect? I mean, comedy is not really meant to be in that, you know, in that space because it's so big. Like, how do you connect with people and how do you, you know, people are getting beers and getting, you know, pulled pork sandwiches and it's just, and people are talking and smoking weed, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do you connect with them, especially? You know, the, the, this is exactly how they describe it at the RNC convention. The, <laughs> that's this is how they what they think oh, yeah. every barbecue is like. Every just how you described it. Pull pork and people uh, out there weed. eating their pulled pork sandwiches and uh, smoking <laughs> their reefer, smoking their grass. Right. Uh, but it, it's it's, you know, especially if your comedy is if you're a little, you know, you pull back and you're and there's nuance. To yeah. You to your comedy i mean uh, there's a there's a certain type of comic that's gonna do well in that in that space and there's certain styles of comedy that just it just doesn't it, it just doesn't jive unless you out there in their face making them pay attention and you can't and you know you have to take up big space and and you'd have to do that in that audience if it was in a comedy club much less to do that yeah for sure you, I think they sold out that night too. Yeah, yeah, it was, so it was huge and distracting, and so on and so forth. So, um, but what's um, what what's interesting is that the things that the things that nice guys possess, it it comes to them so naturally, just being loyal and kind and generous and empathetic and stuff. And women are like, oh, I don't, I, I want to, you know, I want them. No, you don't. You want you want the idea of this danger but then once you're in this relationship if this person is selfish or abusive or inconsiderate or all those things then you know you're, you're miserable in this relationship and so one of the things that that has to change in terms of you know just in terms of how you present yourself is you have to understand what your value is and how you know uh, how valuable the things that you you do like i'd rather have a i'd rather have a dude like you as a friend in a minute like if i you know i know if i'm if i'm friends with you and i'm loyal to you and we're friends i got a couch to move you'll help me you know what i mean uh mm -hmm. you'll you'll go yeah I, i'll come through and help whereas somebody who's loud and obnoxious man i'm not i ain't moving no goddamn couch you know um so it, it's a it's a it's an interesting thing. And then when you start to reassess the things that you possess, the characters that you possess, and you realize, first of all, how rare it is to have. So we talk about the, you know, on the show, we have an acronym is ACE, which is authenticity, credibility and empathy. So telling the truth, saying what you mean, meaning what you say, showing up when you say you're going to show up and then having the ability to to um to see the person that you're socially the social dynamics of dealing with somebody what they're going through and that is the most important thing in any relationship be it male female relationship romantic family otherwise and when one person is that and the other person isn't that 
you just don't, it, you're just not going to have a healthy relationship. And so having a guy do talk to five women a day, the, uh, the, the therapy of that is to understand first, the first thing that they understand is, wow, I was so worried about this happening or getting cursed out or this, and that never happens. I mean, and even if that does happen, it's so minimal. It's never what you think. At the, at the most, I've had any guy that I put the system, my system through, put them through my system. The most that they've said to me was um, that uh, they may have paid a compliment and the girl didn't respond. And she just kept going. Um, mm. So never in a million years is, the, is that what your worst case scenario in, you know, especially when somebody's introverted and they're not a customer that's not what you perceive in your head, you know? Yeah. That would make, reminds me of like that old um, Adam Sandler joke where his friend's like, you should ask her out the worst she can say is no. And then he asks her out and she's like, get away from me, you freak. And he's like, I think you're <laughs> breaking the rules. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm, that's like always, I always think about like the worst case scenarios, but that's a really good point. Yeah. I definitely want to try more stuff like that. Cause uh, yeah, I still do feel shy talking to strangers and stuff. And, and uh yeah, I don't know. What is the on. what is the sort of craziest or silly thing, silliest thing you've done for love, or in an attempt well, to be in love? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, a lot of it is more like a lot of my I, at times I'm more just get in my head and leads more to like inaction, and and that's like mm-hmm. the most frustrating thing. I did have um, before I went to therapy, I, was, I had a tough breakup where. Um, we weren't gonna see each other again, but she like convinced me to buy her this like um, uh, gold ring for her birthday after the breakup. Cause Ooh, uh, wow. it was, um, yeah, she, I, I, she'd like gotten me stuff on my birthday and then her birthday was like gonna be a month after the breakup. And I was just felt like kind of guilted or pressured into like uh, ordering it for her and sending it to her. Cause I was, wow. I was just like in a very so she was, pleasing. Mentality. She was saying that like, she brought that up as if to say like, yeah, hey, she's like, I want this, uh, like $225 gold who, ring. Or who initiated the breakup? Um, well, that was a situation where I, I kind of, I think I was like kind of initiating the breakup, but I was like having trouble like articulating it. And so, um, we were kind of just like, talking about it and then um she ended up saying that um yeah she just wanted to end it after a while but but i was like the one that kind of initiated the breakup i guess and so you initiated and then stayed in it long enough so that she could initiate it and not kind of take the heat yeah i was i was just like i had trouble making it final i was i like started the conversation but it was just um had trouble like kind of saying what i wanted so yeah, so I, was I, I was talking to a dude, and he wanted to he wanted to, he, he wanted to initiate a breakup. And what he what he was saying to me is that um he he'll he'll want to break up, but he'll usually you know kind of hit into it. But he waits for them to break up with him. Yeah, basically. I used to do. That. Yeah. yeah, and uh, and I said, I said to him, well, what makes what makes you not care about you and your feelings so much that you won't even ask for what it is you want you know yeah like so if you if you're initiate what what was the thing that make you made you want to initiate the breakup um, I, I would imagine selfishness because somebody who's who <laughs> wants to buy wants you to buy a ring after you break up is clearly somebody who's insensitive and selfish i mean and that comes through you know uh, yeah i don't know i guess yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what it was all together, but uh, yeah, I feel like it was just not really uh, clicking or something, but it, it was a very, I did feel really conflicted about it because uh, I think we had, I had like the, more chemistry with this person than like anyone I dated and stuff like that. So I, I was, there was like things I really loved about her and stuff. And so it was, uh, yeah, so I guess that made it confusing, but then I was like, just kind of felt like frustrated. Well, what were the things that you thought you had in com- in common with her? Um, I guess she like a uh, uh, part of it was uh, just uh, we just got along really well, and she had like a very I thought like a super funny kind of sense of humor, like perspective on a lot of things in a way where I thought she was like funnier than a lot of like comedians I knew and stuff, and just a very but like had no interest in 
doing being in showbiz or anything but um she was just very like i guess she was very like emotionally intelligent which i really like what did you what did you not like though um i don't know i guess um i think i was just kind of not ready for a relationship i think i was just kind of was like felt like i was missing out on maybe like dating some more up, people some or pups, something some extra um, <laughs> i mean i don't know i think i yeah maybe I'm i just hadn't smash, had as much dating like experience. you wanted to smash some more puss there was uh, extra puss around yeah i don't know if i <laughs> phrased it that way but uh but yeah, yeah i mean you gotta get um, that extra puss if it's around you don't yeah. want it to go to waste because it I'm will not, expire I'm actually, right here i'm looking at jacob's uh bio and it says wanted to smash more puss yeah i mean that it's in, um, page, it's in writing and, and that's i mean it's got to be true right it's um, on the internet it's in your handwriting yeah, though Dante. that's bio. the thing oh uh, <laughs> yeah in all fairness i have to really i could edit my wikipedia that's so cool out of date, <laughs> but yeah they do let anyone edit anything in there so <laughs> smash more puss. so so it was like you wanted to kind of date and kind of explore some other shit and uh yeah that, i guess so yeah so that's interesting that you know for me that's interesting that you would want something else um and what happens is and this is when i talk about not taking up space it's almost like you know like if i was if i was counseling you i would i would ask you why do you think that you sh why do you think that somebody who doesn't really make you happy why do you think it's more important for them to be happy than you um, I mean, mm -hmm. you should be the most important person in your life, you know? Yeah. And, um, ahead, yeah, totally. Oh, no, sorry. I don't want to know. But uh, no, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's a good point. I, and I think, uh, yeah, my parents are also very, uh, like, they were raised very Catholic and raised me very Catholic. And there was like, yeah, so I think I just kind of got used to this thing of, uh, like, guilt and like you should feel guilty about things or uh like i just kind of learned that i i don't know i think like a lot of my comedy is self-deprecating and that's also just mm -hmm. kind of a mindset i learned from my parents too where like yeah. it was a lot about just like not trying to not inconvenience other people or not trying to ever yeah come close to like bragging or yeah or like it was being played they, yeah i mean i grew up catholic yeah. i was an altar boy and the whole shit and and yeah. you always get that guilt like you don't want to you don't want to um you don't want to stir the pot unless of course you're fucking kids then it's okay <laughs> mm. uh mm. you know we don't we don't want to make waves unless we're fucking the kids then uh, that's okay then there's a lot uh, of waves a lot <laughs> of waves <laughs> <laughs> it's waves heard around the world uh so it's it's interesting that and and then not because the the bottom line is if you don't and you know one of the things that i always say is that a, a, a man has to put his happiness first uh you have to put your happiness first because if you don't she won't um because she's getting a cue from you from how you treat yourself so you're telling her that i'm not worthy of your sacrifice or i'm not worthy of your kindness or i'm not worthy of your civility or your loyalty because i i keep putting you first and the the, the other thing is that a man in general um like if you're dating a woman and your woman is unhappy we feel like failures like we feel like that's our responsibility is to, so you know even when you're married you want you, you, if your kids are starving it's your fault as a man if your woman is unhappy, it's your fault. If she's sexually unsatisfied, it's your fault. If she's if she's unhappy with things, even when she's unhappy and her unhappiness is irrelevant to you just because she's an unhappy person or whatever. You still feel has, responsible still if you're not doing enough. So the importance of putting your happiness first is because when it comes to her happiness is encompassed in your happiness because how do you consider yourself a good partner if your woman is unhappy, you know, if, if your woman is actually unhappy and you're her dude, then you're going, hey, uh, it's almost like you're going, I, I failed on so many levels so much, you know. Um, so you got to put your happiness first and uh, and 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 then everybody's happy because her not being happy makes you unhappy anyway. So you, you work towards that anyway. Um, 
you know, uh, I'm always fascinated. I, and I, I guess I shouldn't be because I was like that to a certain extent. You know, I, I was my mom was always like, share your toys and be nice to people and stuff like that. And I and I, and I still kind of, you know, advocate that I, I feel like I'm a pretty generous person. But I've learned that a lot of people don't have the emotion, the emotional acuity to deal with somebody who is kind and civil and loyal and truthful and empathetic. And so they're just abusive because they're, they're incapable of, of thinking in terms of that, you know, hurt people, hurt people. And so you're, you're in this kind of situation where you want to give and you want to be thoughtful and everything. And you're with somebody who doesn't give a fuck about it. Um, it's interesting too when I ask you what do you what did you love about I mean were you in love with her or no? Yeah, definitely. Um yeah, I was definitely in love with her and it was um very tough to get over it. I mean I still yeah, I don't know. Feel like what, what did you love about her? Um I think we just uh yeah, we just kind of felt really uh connected and um had um you know, we're just like able to communicate really well um and we're just very compatible in a lot of ways and um just like she was very um in the moment which is something i struggle with sometimes and i'm always trying to get better at that but uh she was like very present and we um just had a lot of fun i guess she didn't have a bunch of pussies (laughs) <laughs> i think she yeah I, I think i just i hadn't had a ton of dating experience at the time right. so it was like yes yeah, so i think i was like always a little thinking like oh thinking man, about like, what's around the corner I but uh how yeah, old which, were you when you hooked up with her how old are you uh now? i'm 33 now um and uh this is i guess a few years ago now i don't know um maybe like uh four or five years ago what's, what's your body count jacob Oh, um, like how is it like how many women I've yeah. had sex with? I yeah. I think it's around like forty five or so. That ain't bad. That's not oh. bad at all. That's pretty That's fucking pretty damn good. Pretty oh, damn good there. Um, is a lot I, of that through stand up? Uh, does that make it easier? I mean, yeah, I think a lot of that is through stand up. Um, definitely, a lot of that was like one night stand type situation. I haven't had a lot of like long-term dating, uh, maybe a handful of long-term dating. Things, so but, is uh, it, is it's kind of the thing where you do stand up and, and that's the place where you, you are perceived mostly as, as confident and stuff. And so it kind of rolls into that. Yeah. I think it just makes it sometimes easier to meet people. Cause um, like I said, I have trouble like kind of starting conversations, but if someone has seen me on stage, um, then they might approach me or it might be easier to connect. So they're approaching the you and then you, you just kind of close the deal. Now, when they approach you, are you, is it, is it, are you in your element or do you have to push yourself to close the deal? Um, it depends. It's like, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes, um, sometimes there's people that approach me or I've had like friends that are kind of, um, will help me as like kind of, I'll wing, hook you up. a wing woman or a wing man or whatever but like uh, oh you you like my friend my friend likes you that type of thing or or yeah like i have a friend who's really directed i think it's just been a really good wing woman sometimes <laughs> in a way where like i didn't i felt like i didn't do anything but she just kind of convinced someone to like go home with me or something somebody to fuck you. <laughs> but and I, was, I was like felt like i had nothing to do with it but uh but yeah so i i yeah. I mean, then, however you get there, that's a good wing person. I mean, the results are really all are, you know, however you get the points on the board as far as a wing. I man guess. Goes, uh, yeah. Yeah. So they got very, the assist. I mean, that's a full assist right there. Primary assist. For the record, Harry is never fucking wingman me. Never. How can I wingman you? You don't need a wingman. <laughs> yeah, but it would be nice if you. Well, I could try if you, you know, do a, am I supposed do a... to be a wingman? You're <laughs> flying all over the place. It's hard to be your wingman. You're flying in and out of ca- uh, caverns and caves, You're doing buzzing the, the towers. Maverick. Yeah, I'm top, I'm top gun in it. I'm top gun two in it. <laughs> if anything, it's going to get me killed. <laughs> Being in your wake, it'll be, uh, you know, I'll die like goose. So I got to be away from you when you're doing that. It's dangerous. I don't know. We got to reassess this friendship, Harry. I'm just thinking oh. about it. You've never fucking wingman me. You. No, I haven't. I haven't wingman you. But again, when do I need, you know, when do you need it? I'm there. 
I'm there in case that anything's gone down, but nothing's there's never been a need for me to go. Hey, you should fuck this guy. <laughs> They're like, what? I'm like, you should fuck this guy. They're like, all right, I know. All right, good. Then he my job here t- is done. He already told me that. Yeah. He already said he wanted to fuck me. I go, oh, all right. Then yeah, you, well, you're you like, should oh, listen to him. I'm late again. All right. Well, if you need me here, I'll be over here sipping my uh, Diet Coke. If anything goes down, you just <laughs> just wave me on over. I mean, I'm, I'm going to expect you to fucking wing, man. All right. Let's give it the next time we go out. Now you're back on the market. Yeah, officially. Yeah. Yeah, officially or not, whatever. Or not, still, whatever you want to call it. Still married, but whatever. What is, well, you know, she doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a weird. It's a, but I, you know, I would say that's a um, that's a great way to kind of do that. I mean, uh, I feel like I want to help you, Jacob. I want to help you get over this. I'm gonna let's oh, let's, <laughs> let's I, I let's, could probably use a lot of help. Let's uh let's. Let's keep in touch. I'm gonna, I, I want to put you through my plan. Let's exchange numbers. I'm going to put you through. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be true. smashing all that extra <laughs> push you wanted that made you mm-hmm. dump that other chick. You know, because we know that's <laughs> what you want. Like we can uh, tell I mean, you know, a, you're too shy to say uh, it. But what you want is you know, extra push. Yeah. You didn't want to fucking waste you're, your way with that <laughs> chick who you so compatible. You wanted to go and smash other puss. <laughs> oh, um, uh, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, God. I'm just like thinking about everyone. Gonna Don't worry, Jacob. Dante will be out there. Your wingman. I'll be your secondary wingman. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I have I have done that. With, hey, you're not fucking him. You know, what yeah. you mean? you're not fucking him. Why not? I like him. I mean, but you like him. Yeah, I like him. Well, why are you fucking him? What's wrong with you? Mm, I've actually seen that happen. The clock That's is scary. ticking, oh, sweetie. <laughs> Yo, uh, can you hang out a little bit? Let's um, we're gonna yeah, totally. Can we're gonna go to the Patreon? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, we could do Patreon. I figure we have some listener mail too. We could do over at Patreon as well. Okay, we'll if we want, we, we'll see what we how we do this thing. But I'm I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna um, I'm gonna get your number, Jacob. We're gonna I'm gonna we're gonna go through the phases. Then I'm gonna have you back on. We're gonna have you back on. Oh, gonna, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah I would totally that'd do. Be dope. <laughs> that uh, awesome. what do you want to plug? Anything you want to plug? Oh sure, yeah. I've got a one-hour stand-up comedy special free on YouTube, unemotional roller coaster. It's streaming on audio platforms too. And then um, my thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my social media is Mr. Jacob Williams. That's for like Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter and stuff like that. And um, I have JacobWilliamsComedy.com. I have some tour dates coming up, so please check those out. I'll be doing. I usually post on Instagram, but like local comedy shows around New York as well. So I'm excited about all of that. I think I'm taping Wild Now next month too. So I'm looking forward to that. Cool, cool, that's cool. All. Uh, man, I appreciate you. Um, Harry, talk to me real quick. Uh, I am doing consultations. And if you wanted any sex and relationship advice, any life advice, you could uh, email me at uh, advicefromharry at gmail.com and uh, we can set up a consultation. Uh, you can check me out. I do, you know, everybody knows. Google me, bitch. You know what it is. Uh, consultation at DanteNumber.com. Click on consult. You can book right on the page. Prices and everything are there. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, all that shit. You know what it is. Uh, and don't forget to follow the Patreon. Please help us out with the Patreon. And Patreon helps us to keep doing do, doing the show. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, the Patreon is www.patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, GYBB gets your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. Check us out on the Patreon side. We're going to dig in a little bit deeper and do some listener mail and some good shit. We are out.